Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good, Good evening, children. Good evening. I think sorry is not enough to uh, apologize because I've made you wait in the meeting for uh, the last half an hour. Um, I had a good reason for it, but anyways, I don't want to waste any more time by sharing that. Thanks for your uh, patience, children. So what I'm going to do today is so the class is meant to be for two hours uh, and I'm starting now at 7.30. So I'll uh, do now from now till 8.30. I'll give you a break of 15 minutes from 8.30 to 8.45 for you to finish your dinner and we'll get back at uh, maybe 8.50 and uh, the next one hour from 8.50 to 9.50. Kindly cooperate today. We'll make the first one hour from 7.30 to 8.30. 8.30 to 8.45, I'll give you the break to have your, to finish your dinner. Finish it and get back at 8.50. And then we'll continue from 8.50 to 9.50. We'll have the uh, second hour. So that way I'll make uh, two hours of class today. All right, children. Fine. Let's get started without wasting any more time. I've shared my screen. It's visible, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, all right. I'm not presentable, so I've not turned on my video. All right. So here, uh, if the equation uh, 1 plus m square of x square plus 2 mcx plus c square minus a square is equal to 0 has equal roots. So if this equation has equal roots, if this equation has equal roots, prove that c square is equal to a square into 1 plus m square. OK, so this is what we have to prove. This is what we'll have to prove. What is given to us? We are given, uh, we are given a quadratic equation. And what is given about that quadratic equation? The quadratic equation has equal roots. So we are given a condition. We are given a condition. The quadratic equation has equal roots. That means we know d is equal to 0. That is enough for us to prove this. That's enough for us to prove this. We just need to construct. We, we just need to have an equation which we can solve and, you know, uh, get this result. Which we can work and get this result. So we are given a quadratic. If you are just given a quadratic equation, you cannot do anything much with it. Uh, but you are given a quadratic equation with this condition that this equation has equal roots. Equal roots means the discriminant is equal to zero. The value of d is equal to zero. So this is an equation because th that means b square minus uh, uh, 4ac is equal to zero. If d is equal to 0, it means b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. Now you can substitute uh, the expressions for uh, a, b, and c. So you get an equation. You Working that equation uh, probably will land with this uh, you know, result. Understand the information given, children? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, all of you have yes. to take screenshots. Yes, all of you, please take uh, screenshots. I'll explain the slide once or twice. And then you'll have to take a picture and uh, complete it later and share the pictures with me. OK, so the question is clear. The quadratic equation is given. Uh, the equation has equal roots and we'll have to prove this. All right, <clears throat> so see here. So it's given that the equation, this one, has equal roots. What are the values of A, B, and C? How do you get the values of A, B, and C? The equation is in the standard form. The equation is in the standard form because you can see x squared, its coefficient. x, its coefficient. And the constant without the x or x squared term is equal to 0. I'll tell you again. See it? You can see the x squared, x squared here. And this is the coefficient of x squared. So this is the x squared term. <clears throat> this is the x term. You can see the x here. And this is the coefficient of x. And this is the constant term the one which does not have an x or x square in it. So the given quadratic equation is in the standard form. And we can pull the values of a, b, and c from this. So a is, take away x square. This is a. The coefficient of x square is a. x, what is x? Just remove this. Sorry, what is b? Just remove the x term. x, what is this? 2mc, that is b. And c is this entire thing. c square minus a square. Do we understand that, children? The yes, values of A, B, and C. OK, so these are the values of A, B, and C. Just remove. See, the first the equation should be in the standard form. Yes, it is in the standard form. So 
uh, the coefficient of x square is a. So just take away this. This is a. The coefficient of x is b. So this is b. And the constant is c. All right. Now, since it's given that the equation has equal roots, we know that d is equal to 0. D is equal to 0, which means b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. I have used capital letters a, b, and c because we have a here. We have a and c in the uh, equation given to us. So we shouldn't mix up uh, both. Uh, hence, uh, I've used capital letters here. Normally, it is b square minus 4ac like this is equal to 0. But since we have a and c, small letter a, small letter c in the given equation, so just to differentiate, we use capital letter. Uh, we, you have to use capital letters here. So now this is the uh, equation or the condition. All right, now substitute. This is b, b square minus 4 into this is a into this is c is equal to 0. That's it. You just have to work this. So solving this, we've been doing since, uh, so, so, meaning algebra, we've been uh, doing since 7th standard. So this is not difficult for you. So what is this? 4m square c square. Okay, when you square this, is it is 2mc into 2mc. So 4m square c square. And here, what will happen? I put the 4 here, and you know how to multiply a binomial with a binomial. This has two terms. This one has two terms. How will you multiply? 1 into c square minus a square plus m square into c square minus a square. You don't have to show so many steps because you're in 10th standard. All right. So this is how we multiply a binomial by a binomial. So the first term into the second bracket, the second term into the second bracket. So what do you get? C square minus A square. See here, C square minus A square uh, plus C square M square uh, minus A square M square plus C square M square minus A square M square is equal to zero. Is equal to zero. Now you can see that, uh, you know, this equation, you can divide by four throughout. See, why do we divide by four throughout? To simplify the equation, to make it easier, to make it easier proceed. So see here, you can divide this by 4, this one by 4. You must divide by 4 throughout because you can see 4. The first term has 4. The second term also has 4. So we divide by 4 throughout. So see here, dividing by 4 throughout. The RH is also by 4. So that then what happens? 4 and 4 gets cancelled, 4 and 4 gets cancelled, and 0 by 4 is 0. So we have m square c square, and then see there's a minus here. So minus c square minus into minus plus a square minus into plus minus c square m square minus into minus plus a square m square is equal to zero so don't forget to multiply all the terms in the bracket with the minus here minus so that 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 gives you this equation now what ha what's happening yeah there's minus c square m square here and there's a plus a c square m square here they get cancelled all right, now, so we are almost, uh, you know, uh, come to the end of the, uh, uh, you know, this working. So now what should we do? How to proceed? Look at this one. Look at this result. What is this result showing you? This result shows C square on one side. This result shows C square on one side and something on the other side. So that means what? Now you have, uh, you have A square here. You have A square, M square here, and you have a minus C square. So you're taking to the other side. See, I'll write out the remaining. See, this one gets cancelled. Minus C square plus A square plus A square M square is what you have is equal to zero. Now, we don't know what to do next. So, we look at the result here. C square is alone. So, transpose C square. So, you get A square plus A square M square is equal to C square. Then A square is common here because you can see here A square is uh, common out here. So, A square common. You get 1 plus M square is equal to C square. Or in other words, c square is equal to a square into 1 plus m square. Wasn't that simple, children? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, I'll give you a minute to go through. Uh, just tell me if you have any questions. You can just include this. Take a screenshot now with this step.
Any questions, children? Yeah. All right. You can just write hence proved here, hence proved. Take a picture, children. I told you I'm not sending these on WhatsApp. Only if the presentations are not ready and you know I work and teach you, uh, those I'll be sending or sharing on WhatsApp. Otherwise, you have to take pictures. Yeah, this is the next one. If the roots of the equation, so you can again see a quadratic equation are equal. So similar to the early one. Uh, if the roots of this equation are equal, that means this quadratic equation has equal roots. If the roots of the equation it's a quadratic equation. If the roots are equal, roots are equal. When are the roots equal? If the roots are equal, that means the discriminant is zero. D is equal to zero for equal roots. Equal roots means real and equal roots. Then you'll have to prove that either A is equal to zero or A cube plus B cube plus C cube is equal to three ABC. So same thing again, children. Okay, very similar. So see here, it's given that this equation it's given that this equation has equal roots. Now pick out the values of A, B, and C. So this is A. It is in the standard form. This is B. You can see here this is A. Look at B minus 2 into A square minus B, C. And C is this one. This is C because you cannot see an X or X square there. So the given quadratic equation is in the standard form. X square term. See the equation is uh, you know showing its uh, X square term x square term, x term, and the constant. OK, so you can pull the values of a, b, and c directly. And then since it's given that the equation has equal roots, d is equal to 0, which means b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. So now substitute the values. So b, this is b, this is b. You can see it here. Please go along with me, children. We are, we are doing it together. Don't race me. Don't go ahead of me and see something here. We'll go together. Anyways, you'll have to wait for me to come here. You cannot see the next slide before I show you. So we'll go together. So we are here now. Look at this part. B square. This is B square. See the square. If you write like this, minus 2C, this is the mistake you could make. B square like this. So this is wrong because the, the whole of B has to be squared. This is B. See, this is B. This whole thing has to be squared. B squared. The whole thing must be squared. So in a hurry, we could do this, you know, and square only this part, this part. What about this? This is also B, right? This should not be neglected. Even this is a part of B. Why are you not squaring this? So use the bracket. So see here, I've used a square bracket. I'm enclosing the whole of B in the square bracket. This is B square minus 4 into A. This is A, A into C. This is C, this is C is equal to 0. All right, so now uh, what is uh, minus 2 the whole square? <clears throat> square this one, minus 2 the whole square is plus 4. It's plus 4. Minus 2 the whole square is plus 4. And here, a squared minus B squared, the whole square. So basically you're squaring this and squaring this. So this is minus two into minus two, which is plus four. And this one is A squared minus BC, the whole square. And then here minus open the bracket like we did earlier. It's a binomial into, it's a product of two binomials. C squared minus AB into B squared minus AC. So C squared into the second bracket, B squared minus AC, minus AB into the second bracket, B squared minus AC. So this is B square, C square b square c square then uh, a c cubed minus a c cubed and then minus a b cubed and then minus into minus plus a square b c is equal to zero is equal to zero so you can include the step four into a square minus b c the whole square minus 4 into uh, b square c square minus 
ए सी क्यूब माइनस ए बी क्यूब प्लस ए स्क्वायर बी सी इज इक्वल टू जीरो ओके दिस व्हाट वी गेट now you can again see that 4 is common the first term and the second term have 4 so in the next step what we do we divide by 4 throughout <clears throat> we divide by 4 throughout so then you can see 4 and 4 gets cancelled so you are left with you can square this you will have to square this this is like uh, x minus y the whole square Okay, x minus y the whole square which is x square minus two x y plus y square. So that's what you see here. This four and four gets cancelled. Expand this one, so you get a to the power four. You know this. I'm not uh, explaining this. Two a b and b square. Again, b square. If you put b c square, this is wrong. This is b or, or this is y. Y square. So b square c square. And then minus uh, all that which you have in the second bracket as it is is equal to zero. Zero by four is zero. Now open up the uh, bracket. Uh, apply the minus sign to every term in the second bracket. Bring all the terms out of the bracket. And on simplification, what's happening? A to the power four as it is minus two a square b c. Mm, here also one minus a square b c. See here minus a square b c. So minus three a square b c. Minus two a square b c minus a square b c minus three a square b c plus b square c square minus b square c square cancels. A c cube, a b cube is equal to zero. So this is what you get on simplify. Okay, there are uh, there is one pair of like terms. Uh, two minus two a square b c and minus a square b c. So that makes minus three a square b c. And then these two terms get cancelled. And the remaining as it is is equal to zero. Alright, now actually we don't know now. Uh, after a point, you know you don't know what to do. After a point, you actually don't know what to do. So you'll have to uh, go back to the question and see what result has to be proved because you don't know. Okay, so after this, seriously, you know, uh, you know, we. Uh, I mean, okay, I don't know what to do after this, so I go back to the question. I see the result. Okay, so the result has three B C, three A B C on one side. The result has three A B C on one side. Oh no, here it is. The result is A is. You'll have to prove that A is equal to zero, or A Q plus B Q plus C Q is equal to three A B C. Remember when we solve a quadratic equation, you know, when you have x minus three into x minus four is equal to zero, you will say x is equal to three or x is equal to four. So probably you know you are expecting a product is equal to zero here. That that's what I that that's the feeling I get. Why do I get that feeling? Because the result is we'll have to prove that either a is zero or or a cube plus b cube plus c cube is equal to three a b c. So that's similar to this. No, when you solve a quadratic equation and you get something like this. You get something like this is equal to zero. You say either x is equal to five or x is equal to minus seven. So you are looking for a situation like this to happen. So some product is equal to zero. Okay. So basically, this is just rearranging, children. <clears throat> See, here. even without rearranging, you can do it. See, if you feel, why have you? <clears throat> If you ask me this question, why have we put the three a square b c behind? How do you know that you'll have to put it here? Don't you don't put it there? No problem. I'll work it. I'll work and show you. No problem. You don't have to put it behind. I don't know for some reason. I just arrange it like this. It's okay if you don't arrange. It's okay. You don't have to arrange it like this. Okay. So at this point or after this point, we see that a is common throughout. See here, a this one always. You see, whenever you have an equation or an expression, and there is something common throughout, take out the common factor. See, like we divide by four throughout to simplify the equation. Okay, so we divide by four throughout to simplify the equation. In the same way, take take out if if all the terms have something in common, bring it out. A is common, so bring it out. A outside, so you have a cubed, then this b cubed, then a outside, no, so c cubed, and then this becomes three abc is equal to zero. Now we got that product C here. A into a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus three a b c is equal to zero. 
So we were expecting a product like that because we love to show that A is zero or this is zero. So see here, we got the product. A into, uh, you know, AQ plus BQ plus CQ minus three ABC is equal to zero. All right, so we, we are happy. We're close to the result. Okay, so the product is zero. So the product is zero means either <clears throat> A is equal to zero. See, it's a product. So that means e A is equal to zero or AQ plus BQ plus CQ minus 3ABC is equal to zero. And now, so that means A is equal to zero or when you take this to this side, when you transpose AQ plus BQ plus CQ is equal to 3ABC, hence proved. Go through children. I'll give you two minutes time to go through. How do you find it, children? Same. How do you find it, children? Easy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So very good. So the given equation is in the standard form because we can see three terms. The x square term, you can see the x square term showing off its coefficient, the x term, showing off its coefficient and the constant. All that which does not have the x or x square factor is the constant. So b square minus 4ac. Now don't say there are four terms. Don't say, <clears throat> don't say, okay, this is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. This is the fourth term. No, this collectively is the third term. This collectively is the third term. So it is in the standard form. You can, uh, you know, get the values of A, B, and C. We use capital A, capital letters A, B, and C because we already have small letters A, B, C in the uh, given quadratic equation. So we bring out the values of A, B, C. And how do we know that? How? Why have we written D is equal to zero? Because it is given that the quadratic equation has equal roots. It's given. See, if the roots of the equation are equal. That means D is equal to zero. If you have to prove, if you have to prove that the roots are equal, then you have to find D. If you have to prove that the roots are equal, prove that the roots are equal, then you should not write D is equal to zero. You must find D. That is, you should work B square minus 4AC and you must get the answer as zero. 
Don't confuse between the two. If the question is prove that the quadratic equation has equal roots, then you should not write D is equal to zero. You must prove that it has equal roots. That means you should find D. Find you should find B square minus 4AC. You must work, 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 and you should get zero. You must get D is equal to zero. When you get D is equal to zero, then you say that since D is equal to zero, the equation has uh, equal roots. So if you have to find or if you have sorry, if you have to show that the equation has uh, sorry, if you have to show that the equation has equal roots, you should find D. You must find B square minus 4AC. You must get the answer as zero. Then you will say that the equation has equal roots. But here it is given the roots are equal. That means D is equal to zero. You're working with that condition. That's all. B square minus 4AC is equal to zero. Substitute. Divide by four throughout to simplify the equation. Then open up the brackets. Simplify the like terms. Look at the result you need to prove. And whenever there is something common, please bring out the common factor. And there, there it is. You have the result. Take a screenshot, children. Yes, yes. So again, similar question, children. If the root of the equation, the equation is in the standard form. You can see it is in the standard form, x square term, x term, and the constant. So if the roots of the equation are equal, the roots are equal. You don't have to prove that they are equal. The roots are equal. What you should prove? Prove that A by B is equal to C by D. Prove that A by B is equal to C by D. So again, the equation, this one, has equal roots. So these are the values of A, B, and C. Now you know how to get them. You should take it with the sign. Minus 2 into AC plus BD is B, along with the sign, if it's negative. And D is equal to 0 because uh, roots are equal. B square minus 4AC is equal to 0. So B square, how do you write B square? The whole of B, this whole thing must be squared. Mm -hmm. This is B. This whole thing has to be squared. So when you square it, you get minus 2 into minus 2 plus 4. Minus 2 into minus 2 plus 4. AC plus BD, the whole square. Minus as it is. <clears throat> or you can even multiply here, children. You can even multiply. Let me do that. Okay, let me do that here. Don't take a screenshot now. You can multiply here. So what will you get? Tell me, somebody tell me. What will you get on multiplying, children? Yes, yes, fast. Yeah, the new girl, is she there in the meeting? Subhalakshmi, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Can you help me? Multiply and tell me. Yes. Mira. Ma'am. Yeah, Mira, tell me the product. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. Ma'am, I was disconnected. Can you repeat it? No, I want you to find the product here. This one. Oh, uh, can you a square c square minus yeah. four into. No, no, leave the four. Just multiply the two binomials. Okay, a square, a square. square c square plus a square d square uh. plus b square.
square c square plus b square d square equal to zero, ma'am. Very good, very good. Thank you. I'll just make write that. Yeah, so this will be, I'll just take away this and I'll write minus 4 into a square c square uh, plus a square d square plus b square c square plus b square d square is equal to 0. Then what will you do in the next step, children? Ma'am, then we have to expand that a c plus b d whole square. No. Cancelling four and four minus four. Yeah, and four. you should divide. Yeah, write the same thing. Write the same, uh, you know, equation again and divide by four throughout. So divide by four throughout. When you divide by four throughout, what will happen? AC plus BD the whole square. Four and four will get cancelled. So AC plus BD the whole square. And then this product, which we've already done. A square C square plus A square D square plus B square C square plus b square d square is equal to zero then open up the bracket when you divide by four throughout the force uh, they get cancelled and zero by four is also zero expand expand so again as Mira said you can expand at any point so expand using x plus y the whole square and then uh, apply the minus sign to all the terms inside the bracket this is what you get Simplify the like terms. And you get this. I've chained the signs throughout. In the next step, I've chained the signs throughout. In the next step, I've chained the signs throughout. Minus a square d square plus a square d square plus minus minus plus. You're changing the signs throughout. So writing the terms with the opposite signs everywhere. Now it's of the form. Now these three terms, the three terms are of the form a square minus 2ab plus b square or x square, x square minus 2xy plus y square. You must show that it's in that form. It's in the form x square minus 2xy plus y square. See here, you can write a square d square as ad the whole square, b square c square as bc the whole square. And see the middle term 2 into ad into bc, which is 2abcd. So clearly, uh, this equation is a perfect square. You can write it in the form x square minus 2xy plus y square, ad the whole square plus bc the whole square minus 2ad into bc, 8th standard, is equal to 0, is equal to 0. So that means... If it's of the form uh, x square minus 2xy plus y square, it is x minus y the whole square. AD minus BC the whole square is equal to 0. AD minus BC the whole square is 0, meaning AD minus BC is equal to 0. So AD is equal to BC. AD is equal to BC when you transpose. AD is equal to BC. Now you will have to get the result A by B is equal to C by D. See here, you have AD is equal to BC. You need to get A by B. So AD by B is equal to C. You can use these extra steps if you want. See here. See here. After this, after this, you can write AD. After this, you can write AD by B is equal to C. Because it's A by B, no? So you bring the B for division. Then it's C by D. So A by B is equal to C, bring the C for the D for division, C by D. You can include the step. This one step you can, you can include. What is that? AD by B is equal to C. So A by B is equal to C by D, hence proof.
children now i've changed my mind i feel uh, these three are very important from the examination point of view please i'll give you 10 uh, minutes time right on now please write down you can even start from here you can see it on the screen start writing from here <clears throat> Ma'am, this question. No, no, no. I'll show you sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Very important from the examination point of view. So I don't want you to make a mistake of not writing it. So do it now in the class. Sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. We'll write it now in the class. Make it fast. Yeah, I'll just come back in five minutes, children. Please finish 16, 17, and 18. You have the screenshots with you. Use it and complete it.
done writing children yes ma'am all the three yes ma'am ma'am second one writing no ma'am okay You have done this one, children. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Do this. Yeah, children. Fine. If you have not completed, you will have to do it later. <clears throat> yeah. See this again. Similar. If the roots of the equation uh, are equal, then prove that two b is equal to a plus c. So the last four, including this, are all similar questions. You have different quadratic equations given to you, and all the four, the roots are given to be equal. So that means d is equal to zero. B square minus four AC is equal to zero. So working that, you should be able to prove the results, the desired results. So again here, this equation has equal roots. So the values of A, B, C. This is A. 
this is B and this is C. Cap letter A, B, C because we have small letters in the equation given. So why D is zero? Because the uh, equation has equal roots. Now what do you mean by D is equal to zero? That means B square minus 4AC is equal to zero. B square minus 4AC is equal to zero. So B square substitute B square minus 4 into A into C is equal to zero. Expand, expand this. So C minus A the whole square is C square plus A square minus 2AC minus 4 and then multiply these two binomials. <coughs> multiply these two binomials. So this is what you get is equal to zero. Now you cannot divide by four throughout because uh, this one does not the first term. So here there was no four here. Only this one has a four. So you cannot divide by four throughout. OK, so you have to open up the bracket. Just open up the bracket. So minus four multiply minus four uh, with every term inside the bracket and get free all the terms from the bracket. That's the next step. Now, if you can simplify like terms, how many terms are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven terms are there. OK, any like terms, like terms? Oh, yeah, so I think uh, there is AC here and AC here also. Only these two can be simplified, nothing else. There's AC here and there's AC here also. So it will be plus two AC, plus two AC, plus two AC. Nothing other than that you can do, OK? So. So basically in the next step, arranging the terms. So see here, I've written a square first. Then this, I'll tell you why, plus 4b square and then the c square. I've written the perfect squares first. Okay, and then this ab term, then the bc term, and then the ac term is equal to zero. Is equal to zero. I've written the perfect squares first a square uh, plus 4b square plus c square and then the a b b c and c a terms minus 4 a b minus 4 b c and then there are two uh, a c terms so on simplifying plus 4 a c minus 2 a c is plus 2 a c is equal to zero so now this reminds you about this identity uh, x square plus y square plus z square plus 2 x y plus 2 y z plus 2 x z is equal to x plus y plus z the whole square nine standing okay because here in this identity also you need six terms okay here also you need six terms in this identity x squared plus y squared plus z squared uh, plus 2xy plus 2yz see a six terms plus 2xz is equal not is equal to zero is equal to x plus y plus z the whole square here also there are uh, six terms, and of which three are perfect squares. And then you have the x, y, y, z, and x, z terms. So in all, there are six terms in the left-hand side, of which three are perfect squares, x squared, y squared, z squared. We have six terms in the left-hand side of the identity. Okay, of which three are perfect squares, x squared, y squared, and z squared. So which is why we have written a squared plus 4b squared plus c squared as the first three terms. And then, uh, so those three terms are followed by minus 4AB, AB term, BC term, and then uh, the AC term is equal to zero. Now put it in that form. Show that it's of that form. How? See, this is nothing but A the whole square. The first three are perfect squares. The first three are perfect squares. One minute, children, just a minute. Yeah. So uh, the first three terms are perfect squares. So you can see here A, the whole square, 
Now, don't worry about this minus. I'll tell you why this minus. Uh, plus 2b the whole square, plus c the whole square. Now, look at the remaining three terms. Okay, the ab, the, this term which has ab is negative, and this term which has bc is also negative. And b is common there, b is common. So, for the b term, for the b term, prefix a minus sign. For this b term, you'll have to prefix a minus sign. Why? Why to the b term we'll have to uh, prefix a minus sign? Because in the rest of the three terms, my, the, the negative terms are 4ab and 4bc, in which b is the common uh, algebraic uh, term. b is common. So for the b term here, you'll have to fix a minus sign. Nine standard. So it will be uh, plus 2ab, plus 2bc, plus 2c. This plus children, it's a mistake, typing mistake. Okay, plus 2ab, plus 2 into a is a, into b is minus 2b, plus 2bc, plus 2 into b into c, minus 2b into c, plus 2 into c into a, c into a. Now you can check when you uh, simplify this, you will get minus 4ab, which is here. When you simplify this, you will get minus 4bc, which is here. And when you work this, you will get minus 2ac. So clearly it's of the form. It's of the form x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2xy plus 2yz plus 2xz, which is equal to x plus y plus z the whole square. So it's nothing but a minus 2b plus c the whole square. All these six terms can be written in short as x plus y plus z the whole square, where x is a, y is minus 2b. And Z is C. X plus Y plus Z the whole square. A minus 2B plus C the whole square. So A minus 2B plus C the whole square is equal to 0, which means A minus 2B. See here, if, if supposing X minus Y the whole square is equal to 0, that means X minus Y is also 0. So the whole square is 0, which means a minus 2b plus c is equal to 0. Now on transposing, you will get a plus c is equal to 2b because the result looks something like that. 2b is uh, taken separately. So transpose 2b, so you will get a plus c is equal to 2b or 2b is equal to a plus c. Hence proof. Yeah, take a picture, children. One minute, I'll just do the corrections. Just a minute. You need to include uh, b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 here. And also, this is uh, this is plus. All right, children. So for this, you need to, uh, you know, use this identity. What's the identity? X square plus Y square plus Z square plus 2XY plus 2YZ plus 2XZ is equal to X plus Y plus Z the whole square. So we presented it in that form x square plus y square plus z square plus 2ab, sorry, plus 2xy plus 2yz plus 2xz is equal to 0. So that can be written as x plus y plus z the whole square, which means x plus y plus z is equal to 0. On transposing, you get the result. Take a picture, children. Yeah. 
Done, children? Class, you say emoji, raise your hand. In today's class, we have Meera, Meera, Priyanka, Kanishka, Subalakshmi, Harini, Sneha, Shreyas, Hitesh, Pranav, Rajarajeshwari, Nandini, Ananya, Ram, and uh, Tarun Murli. All right. Very good, Chitu. Tarun, is it easy? Are you following? Ah, yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. I just joined now at me. Oh, okay. You had a different class, is it, at the same time? Uh, no, ma'am. I was facing network issues. Okay, okay, fine. Okay. No, it's not fine. Okay, fine. Noted. Right. Take a picture, children. How many of you not able to recall the identity? Are you able to recall the identity, children? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So. All right, children. Fine. Yeah. So here we need to show that this equation. I'll just do this one and uh, give you your uh, break for dinner. Show that the equation, show that the equation, so it's in the standard form. You can see that uh, uh, there is an x square term, x term and the constant. So show that the equation has no real roots when a is not equal to b. Show that it has no real, see you'll have to show that it has no real roots. That means you should find the discriminant because the discriminant, the value, see how do you decide if the equation has equal roots, unequal roots or no roots, how do you decide? The discriminant, the value of the discriminant helps you to decide the nature of the roots of the quadratic equation. The value of the discriminant helps you decide the nature of the roots of the quadratic equation. You will have to show that this one has no roots, no real roots. That means you should find D. You must find D and using the value of D. You must say that, see for this reason. OK, so no real roots means D should be less than zero. So you must find D and you should show that D is less than zero. So if D is less than zero, the equation will have no real roots. To see here. Now, one thing which I have to tell you before we proceed is that uh, uh, when you know in the uh, equation, the quadratic equation, there are two uh, unknowns like a and b. Remember that the value of a and b will not be the same because if a is equal to b, then why should they use a and b? They could have used only a. And also, a and b will not be negatives of one another. Because if uh, if supposing a is 5 and b is minus 5, then why should they use the letter b? Instead, they could write minus a. So these are the default, uh, you know, uh, default things which you must know. In the quadratic equation, you can see unknowns a and b. X square is a variable, X is the X square and X, they, that, they are the variable, X. Now these are the unknowns, A and B, A square, B square, so A and B, A and B are the unknowns. Remember that since they've used two unknowns, A and B, their values are different. Their values are different. What A and B cannot be? A, A and B cannot be equal because if A and B are equal, why should they have another variable like uh, another unknown like B? Also, 
a and b so a and b will not be equal a and b also will not be negatives of one another like if a is 3 Uh, then b is minus three is also not possible because if a is three and b is minus three, why b? A and minus a itself they can use. Why b? So for these reasons, a you should understand that a and b have completely different uh, values. That is, they are not equal or they are not negatives of one another. A and b are not equal. The values of a and b are not equal. the values of a and b are not equal the values of a and b cannot be okay i will not write the values of a and b cannot be negatives of one another cannot be negatives of one another with this note we'll begin this uh, you know proof the values of a and b very uh, it's very rational now you wouldn't wonder why is she saying this because they're using two different unknowns a and b that means a and b have totally different values they they're not equal a and b have, do not have equal values if they're equal why a and b they can do use only a or only b and also they will not be negatives of one another because if they are negatives why a and b a minus a with one unknown only they can construct the equation why two so all this suggests that a and b are not equal and they are also not negatives of one another so write the equation remember you have to find d okay write the equation bring the values of a b and c a b and c Just the coefficient. Cover the x square. Take away the x square. This is a. Take away the x. This is b, and the constant is c. And the constant is c. All right. So we have to find d children because we'll have to show that the equation has no real roots. So this is the equation given. and these are the values of a b and c now we have to find d so d is equal to b square minus 4ac what is b square 2 into a plus b the whole square see you cannot just put a 2 here like this a b square minus 4ab 4 into a uh, 1 into 1 minute four into Yeah, minus four AC four into I think by mistake I put this four into A into C. Oh, I put the one for C in the front. Is it okay? Okay, okay. Four into it's actually into one here, children. Four. This is this is four into C into A here here. This A. I've written it like four into C into A. It's the same. Four AC four C A both are the same. So we are finding now. Now, when you expand this, you will get two uh, square is four into a plus b. The whole square is equal to. When you multiply this, you get eight into a square plus b square. Now, remember, you cannot divide by four throughout. It's not an equation. It's not an equation to divide by four throughout. Now, for example, you have listen to this carefully. Now, supposing you have four uh, x minus eight, you cannot divide by four throughout. it's an expression you cannot divide by 4 it's an expression it should be an equation see if you have 4x minus 8 is equal to 0 that's an equation you can divide by 4 throughout in an expression you can only take out 4 common in an expression supposing you have 4x minus 8 in this expression you can only take out 4 common and write it as x minus 2 Okay, I hope I'm clear till here. So <clears throat> this is b square. This is b square. 
B square minus 4 into C into A. I was telling you that you cannot divide by 4 throughout because it's an expression and not an equation. Only an equation you can divide by 4 throughout or any number throughout. Okay, so on uh, working this, you get 4 into A plus B the whole square minus 8 because 4 to are 8 into A square plus B square. Now expand this A square plus 2AB plus B square. This one as it is. Now you can take out four common. You can take out four common, but you cannot divide by four throughout. You can take out four common. On taking four common, you get uh, this one. All right, on taking four common, this is what you get. This is what you get. And then simplifying the like terms, you get this. Then changing the signs throughout. Minus a square becomes plus a square. Plus 2ab becomes minus 2ab. Plus b square becomes minus b square. So a square minus 2ab plus b square is a minus b the whole square. A minus b the whole square. So minus 4. So we got the value of d. d is equal to minus 4 into a minus b the whole square. d is equal to minus 4 into a minus b the whole square. Now you have to comment. With this expression, will d be negative, 0 or positive? With this value, d is equal to minus 4 into a minus b the whole square. Now it's an expression, but you should be able to make out if d is 0, less than 0 or greater than 0. OK, so now uh, how do we identify? How do we understand if uh, this expression, the value of this expression is 0 or less than 0 or greater than 0? How do we understand? Fine. For that, we need to go back to the question to see the condition. A is not equal to B is given. So A is, see, even if it is not given, I told you A will not be equal to B. Because if they are equal, why A and B? So A is not equal to B given. When you transpose, when you take this to the side, a minus b not equal to 0. That's what you will get. You will get a minus b not equal to See here, a is not equal to b. When you transpose, you will get a minus b is not equal to 0. a minus b is not equal to 0. So that's given to you. a is not equal to b. That means a minus b is not equal to 0. So if a minus b is not equal to 0, a, a minus B, the whole square also will not be 0. If A minus B is not equal to 0, A minus B, the whole square will also be not equal to 0. All right. Now, <clears throat> A minus B, the whole square is not equal to 0. Now, how do you decide? Now, you have to decide on three things. It's not 0. Then, OK, it is, is it less or greater than 0? It's not 0, fine. But is it less than 0 or greater than 0? You can see a minus b the whole square. So if whether a minus b is positive or negative. See now, if you have 3 minus 4 the, or 3 minus 5 the whole square, you will get minus 2 the whole square, but plus 4, it's positive. Or if you have 5 minus 3 the whole square, also it is positive. So that means a minus b the whole square will always be positive. It won't be negative or 0. Because whole square, no? Minus 3 the whole square is 9. Even if you square a negative number, you will get a positive result. So a minus b the whole square is greater than 0. a minus b the whole square is greater than 0. Because what is a minus b? The difference between a and b. They are not equal. They are not equal. A and B are not equal. So either, uh, you know, it's greater than zero. Uh, sorry, A minus B is not equal to zero. That means A minus B is either less than zero or greater than zero. But since it's a perfect square, A minus B is positive. So that's how that's what we write. It's positive meaning greater than zero. But this positive value, see, you have a positive value three. If you multiply this by a negative four, it's a negative value. So minus 4 into a minus b the whole square will be less than 0 because that is negative. So 
that means d is less than zero, which means the equation has no real roots. Let me start from here. See here. We get d is equal to minus four into a minus b the whole square. Let's start again from here. Now, children, it's it's given that a is not equal to b. That means a minus b when you transpose is not equal to zero. A minus b is not zero. If a minus b is not zero, a minus b the whole square also will not be zero. We are understand. We are trying to understand every part of d. We are trying to understand this part of d. A minus b is not equal to zero. So a minus b the whole square is also not equal to zero. We have analyzed this part. So, okay, now it's not zero, but is it positive or negative? Okay, it is not zero. Is it positive or negative? Whole square, no, it will be positive. So a minus b the whole square is always greater than zero because it's positive. Okay, so we have analyzed a minus b the whole square. It's always positive. It will be greater than zero. It is not zero because it is not zero because a and b are not equal. So it's not zero. So when you square it, a minus b the whole square is also not zero. So if it's not zero, is it positive or negative? It's positive. Why? Because a minus b the whole square. So it'll always be positive. Positive means greater than zero. So a minus b the whole square is greater than zero. So we have analyzed this. Now when you multiply that with minus four, when you multiply this with minus four, that is minus four into a minus b the whole square. What will be the value for this? If this is positive, but this is negative. So three into minus four is minus 12. So a minus b the whole square is greater than zero. But when you multiply that by minus four, it will become a negative value. That means this is less than zero. Negative meaning less than zero. See, when we write greater than zero, that means it's positive. Less than zero meaning it's negative. So a minus b the whole square is positive, but when you multiply that with minus four, that positive answer into a negative four. Minus four into a minus b the whole square will be negative or it will be less than zero. If it's less than zero, that means it has no real roots. So we have we have uh, judged or we have analyzed the value of this expression. We have judged the value of this expression. D minus four into a minus b the whole square. A minus b the whole square is positive, but when you multiply the positive value with a negative four, the whole thing is negative. Negative meaning it's less than zero. So D is less than zero. Which means the equation has no real roots. Yeah, take a picture, children. Done, children. Took a picture. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, all of you, please finish your dinner and get back by nine. Nine max, nine five, nine five and start the class. So now we have had a one hour, 15 minute session from 730. From 730, we've had a session for one hour, 15 minutes. I need to make another 45 minutes from nine five. 45 minutes is 950. That way it will be two hours of class today. Finish your dinner and get back max by nine five children. Yeah. Stay in the meeting. Don't leave the call. Stay in the call.
Children, I just came back. Are we all there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All the children, fine. Let's continue. <clears throat> so here, fine. Yeah, yeah. I was. Let me ask you if you understood. So in the earlier question, we got. Uh, we got D is equal to minus. 4 into A minus B the whole square. 4 into A minus B the whole square. And it was given to us. We got D is equal to minus 4 into A minus B the whole square. And in the question, we were given that A is not equal to B. That means <clears throat> A is not equal to B, meaning what? The difference cannot be 0. Like when you take this here, it will be A minus B is not equal to 0. If A is equal to B, A minus B will be 0. A minus B will be 0. So A is not equal to B, meaning A minus B is not equal to 0. So now to understand the value of the discriminant, you need to analyze every part of this expression. What is the value of A minus B? A minus B is not 0. A minus B is not 0. Then what can you say about A minus B the whole square? That also will not be equal to zero because if a minus b, when it can, when can it be zero? Only if a minus b is zero, a minus b the whole square will be zero. But here, since a minus b is not zero, a minus b the whole square also will not be zero. If it is not zero, that means it has to be positive or negative. It has to be positive or negative. <clears throat> now, a minus b the whole square is always positive. Because whatever B, see A minus B is not zero. So it'll either be positive or negative. When you square it, when, when you square a positive number or a negative number, the result is positive. That means A minus B, the whole square is always positive. That means greater than zero. See, when it's positive, we'll write greater than zero. If it's negative, we'll write less than zero or is equal to zero. Greater than zero meaning positive. Less than zero meaning negative or equal to zero. So A minus B the whole square is always positive, is greater than zero. Now, now we understood what is A minus B the whole square. It is always positive. Now that's multiplied by minus four. So when minus four is multiplied with A minus B the whole square, which is positive, this is positive. You're multiplying that with a negative four. So that means the result is negative. The result, because see, minus into plus is minus. The result is negative. That means minus 4 into A minus B the whole square will become less than 0. It's negative. Now this is what is D. This is D. This is D. That means D is negative. D is negative. If D is negative, the quadratic equation has no real roots. <clears throat> That's what we had to prove. Prove that it has no real roots. Yeah, children. So here the question is find k if the equations have distinct roots. Find k if the equations have distinct roots. So distinct root means real and distinct roots. Distinct meaning un uh, unequal roots. Unequal, real and unequal. D is greater than zero is the condition. It is given that the equations have distinct roots. You don't have to prove. The equations, they have distinct roots. They have unequal roots. That means the condition is D is greater than zero. So use D greater than zero for all the three cases. <clears throat> and find the value of K. All right, let's see the first one. So this is the... Uh, this is the given quadratic equation. Uh, get the values of A, B, and C. Now D is greater than zero because distinct roots. So D is greater than zero, which means B square minus 4AC is greater than zero. So B square, 2 square, minus 4 into A into C. So that will be 4K. 4 into 1 into K, 4K is greater than zero. So now 2 square is 4. When you take it to the other side, 2 square is 4. On the other side, minus 4. 2 square is 4. On the other side, minus 4. So minus 4k is greater than minus 4. Minus 4k is greater than minus 4. Now look at this, children. Look at this one. 
um, let me write minus two is uh, greater than minus 10. Correct or wrong? Is this correct? Yes. Minus two is greater than minus 10. Is it true? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now yes. I reverse. The, yes, now I. Yeah. Now suppose I take I take off the negative signs. Now I have two and ten. I'm cancelling the minus signs. I have two and ten. Can I write the same inequality? Two greater no, than ten. No. The inequality no, is reversed. No, the inequality, yeah. The inequality is reversed. Minus two is greater than minus ten. Is correct. Now when you it's like you're cancelling the minus on both the sides and you have two is greater than ten. No, oh, this is wrong. So what you should do is when you cancel the minus on both the sides, you must reverse the inequality. Two is less than ten. When you cancel minus on both the sides of an inequality, inequality is you know where the uh, inequation has a less than or a greater than sign. So minus two greater than minus 10 is true when you take off the minus signs from both the sides reverse the inequality two is less than 10 two is less than 10 is true so minus 4k now when you take this to the side it will be minus 4 now we are like cancelling the minus on both the sides so what happens 4k the inequality is reversed if it's greater than it becomes less than if it's less than it becomes greater than Reverse the inequality because you're cancelling the minus on both sides. So reverse the inequality. 4k is less than 4. So k is less than 1. 4 by 4, which is 1. k is less than 1. 4 by 4, which is 1. 4k. k is less than 4 by 4. So k is less than 1. So for all values of k less than 1, the equation will have distinct roots. Now in the next one, same thing, d greater than 0, b square minus 4ac greater than 0, substitute the values. 6 square on the other side is minus 26, minus gets cancelled. Reverse the inequality, 4k less than 36, k is less than 9, 36 by 4, which is 9. And here again, same thing, substitute the values. You get, uh, <clears throat> what do you get here? k square minus 36 is less than, greater than 0. K square minus 36 is greater than 0. So that means K square is greater than 36 when you transpose. When you transpose, K square is greater than 36. Minus 36 is greater than 0. When you transpose, K square is greater than 36. Now this also I've told you in the last class. So you, you get two values, 6 and minus 6. Take the same inequality with the positive value the opposite inequality with a negative value. So plus or minus 6, k plus or minus 6. So k greater than plus 6, k less than minus 6. So use the same inequality for the positive value and use the uh, reverse, the opposite inequality for the negative value. Always positive value, same inequality. Negative value, reverse the inequality. <clears throat> yes, children, take a screenshot. So this is find K. Given that the equations have distinct roots. That means D is greater than zero. You know that. So when you work, when you cancel the minus signs on both the sides, you should reverse the inequality. And when you have K square greater than 36, you have two values, plus six, minus six. Plus six, minus six. Take the same inequality uh, for the positive value and reverse the inequality for the negative value. Take a picture. Six months. Hello.
yeah so see here quadratic equation real roots quadratic equation real roots find k quadratic equation real roots find k real roots real roots means d is greater than equal to 0 because real roots can be real equal or real unequal real roots meaning it can be real equal or real unequal real equal means d is equal to 0 this is d is greater than 0 so real roots it's real that means put both together d is greater than or equal to 0 d greater than or equal to 0 that's all this work that condition you know how to get the values of a b c quadratic equation values of a b c this is the condition for real roots on substituting you get um, what is uh, d square i'm sorry one minute let me d is greater than so you can add the, these steps here so b square b square minus 4ac is uh, greater than or equal to zero what is b square k the whole square k the whole square minus 4 into uh, a into c 4 into 1 into 4 is greater than or equal to zero and then you can come come back here so k square minus 16 is greater than or equal to zero transpose 16 so k square is k square is greater than or equal to 16 plus 4 minus 4 same inequality positive 4 reverse inequality uh, negative 4 but what is the question what is the least positive value of k the smallest positive value of k what is the smallest positive value of k so that means leave the negative value see uh, k is less than minus 4 meaning what minus 5 k is less than minus 4 so minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 less than or equal to so minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 and minus 7 it all, it's all negative this is negative and here it's all positive k is greater than or equal to 4 greater than or equal to so 5 6 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 which is the smallest positive 4 4 is the smallest positive value. Therefore, the least positive value of k is 4. Plus or minus 4, same inequality positive 4, k greater than or equal to 4, k less than or equal to minus 4. They want the least positive value. This one is negative always. Minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, it's negative. Leave it. Here it's all positive because k is greater than or equal to 4. That means 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. So which is the smallest there? 4. So the least positive value of k is 4. Take a picture, children. Yeah. Now this is perfect square. Find k if it's a perfect square. Perfect square means, I told you in the last class, d is equal to 0. Perfect square means d is equal to 0. For any perfect square quadratic equation, d will be equal to 0. I think I also showed you an example. Now, for example, we square this. <clears throat> Let's square, uh, you know, uh, 4x minus 5 the whole square. So this is a perfect square. On squaring this, you get 16x square uh, minus uh, 2040x uh, plus 25. Okay. So now forget this one. So this one is equal to zero. This is a perfect square. This one is a perfect square. The quadratic uh, polynomial here in this equation is a perfect square. Now let's check the value of D. What is D? B squared. B squared minus 4 into A into C. 4 into A into C. You must get zero if it's a perfect square. So this is 1600 minus when you do this, you will get 1600. 
it is equal to zero. So d is equal to zero. So you see that d is always zero when the quadratic equation is a perfect square. So that is the condition. That is the condition. You can write it here itself. The quadratic equation, the quadratic equation, this one is a perfect square. Is a perfect square. Is a perfect square. So write the values of A, B, C. Okay, so D is equal to zero. The quadratic equation is uh, is a perfect square. Get the values of A, B, C, and uh, because it's a perfect square, D is zero. That means B square minus four AC is equal to zero. Put the values. Put the values of A, B, C. So <clears throat> I've just taken out two common here. Here I've taken out two common. You can even expand it, children. You can also expand it. See, working is not that you should do it like this. You can even expand this one. What I have done is I always take out the common factor. There's a common factor, I bring it out. So what will you do? 2k plus 4. OK, how will you bring out the common factor? 2 is common into k plus 2. All right, but this is whole square. So this one is also whole square. That's what I've written here. That is what I've written here. I'll show you again. Be very careful in putting the square, you know. See here, to first take only 2k plus 4. Take out 2 common, so you'll get k plus 2. Okay, but it is 2k plus 4, the whole square, the whole square. This whole thing is squared. That means you should square the whole thing. That's what you see here. That's what you see here. So now 2 square, 2 square is 4. 4 into k plus 2, the whole square, minus 4 into that binomial. You multiply, you get this is equal to 0. Now you can see that uh, 4 is common. This term has 4. This term also has 4. So divide by 4 throughout. So the 4 and 4 gets cancelled. 4, 4 gets cancelled. 4, 4 gets cancelled. So write the uh, terms. Apply the minus sign to all the terms in the second bracket. And on simplifying the like terms, you get 9k square minus 27k is equal to 0. Take out 9k common. Because it's common. 9k squared minus 27k. 9k is common into k minus 3 is equal to 0. So a product is equal to 0. So that means 9k is equal to 0 or k minus 3 is equal to 0. So if 9k is equal to 0, k is equal to 0 by 9, which is 0. 0 by 9, which is 0. Or k is equal to 3. Positive 3. Take a picture, done? Done, ma'am. All right. So here you'll have to prove that, uh, uh, you know, this uh, quadratic equation has no real roots. You must prove that it has no real roots. That means you should find D. You must find D. It has no real root. That means you must find D. It's not D is less than zero condition. Because they, you do not know about the nature of the roots. You have to prove. You'll have to show. You'll have to work D and show that it has no real root. So you'll have to find D here. You'll have to find D. So in the quadratic equation, 
uh, write the values of A, B, C. A is uh, this one. B is without the X term. So two into this. And C is the constant. And we're finding B square minus 4AC. So we substitute and we're trying to figure out what is uh, B square minus 4AC. So this one is very similar to what we have understood so far, children. So you can help yourself here. When it's an expression, you cannot divide by four through what you can only take out four common. In an equation, if you have like, you know, four uh, X minus uh, 16 is equal to zero. This is an equation. You can divide by four throughout. You can divide by four throughout and you will get X minus four is equal to zero. But if it's an expression that is D is equal to something. D is equal to supposing 4x minus 16. This is an expression for D. It's not an equation. D is this value is an expression. So here what you can do is you can only take out 4 common and write it as x minus 4. If it's an expression, you can only take out something common and write it uh, with a common factor outside. You cannot divide by 4 or any common factor throughout. Equation you can divide. If it's not an equation, if it's an expression, take out the common factor. So like that, we end with uh, this step. The, we we uh, come to this step. And at this point, we change the signs inside the bracket. We change the signs inside the bracket. So in order to change the signs outside the bracket, again, if it's an equation, if it's an equation, you have a minus A plus B is equal to zero. You can simply change the signs throughout. A minus B is equal to zero. If it's an equation, you can change the signs throughout like this. But in an expression that you want to change the signs. So for that, what you'll have to do, you'll have to take the minus sign outside. If you want to change the signs, you should take the minus sign outside. So four becomes minus four. And just write this one, you write it as a squared, d squared. This plus becomes minus and this minus becomes plus. So after simplifying, I said you're getting a uh, negative positive negative change the signs throughout so that that way you get a square d square minus 2 a b c d plus b square c square. It's a perfect square. So that's nothing but a d minus b c the whole square. How you can write the step extra see here minus 4 into a d the whole square. Uh, minus 2 into a D into B C. Plus B C the whole square. You can show that it's of that form. A D the whole square minus 2 into A D into B C plus B C the whole square. It's clearly of the form X square minus 2 X Y plus Y square, which is X minus Y the whole square. A D minus B C the whole square. So we found. <clears throat> We have found the value of D. D is minus 4 into AD minus BC, the whole square. Now let's analyze it part by part. Let's first take up AD minus BC. AD minus BC. See the, the discriminant is minus 4 into AD minus BC, the whole square. We'll have to analyze because you'll have to give your uh, opinion on the nature of the roots. So you'll have to analyze uh, what kind of uh, you know expression this one is. Minus 4 into AD minus BC, the whole square. So again, AD is not slowly. I'll do it. I'll not repeat it slowly. I'll do it. AD is not equal to BC is given. That means when you transpose AD minus BC is not equal to zero. If AD minus BC is not equal to zero, when you square it also AD minus BC, the whole square also will not be zero. So if AD minus BC, the whole square is not equal to zero, it has to be it has to be less than zero or greater than zero. It has to be positive or negative. So again, here it's not zero. It's not zero. It's either positive or negative. So when you square it, it will be positive. So that means AD minus BC, the whole square is positive. So greater than zero. But when you multiply this with when, when you multiply the AD minus BC, the whole square, the minus for outside. The whole thing becomes negative. So that becomes a negative a negative number, which is less than four.
All right. So D is less than zero. It's negative. So the equation has no real roots. Is AD equal to BC children? Answer my questions. Is AD equal to BC? No, ma'am. No. AD is not equal to BC. No, ma'am. That means, yeah, that means AD minus BC is what? Is zero or not zero? Not zero. Not, not zero. equal to zero. It's not equal to zero. So when you square it, AD minus BC, the whole square. That also will not be equal to zero. AD minus BC, the whole square also will not be zero. Then what will it be? Whether will it be positive or negative? If it's not zero, it has to be positive or negative. Is it positive or negative? It's positive because whole square, no? So whatever be the number when you square it, it will become positive. So that means AD minus BC, the whole square is greater than zero. I told you positive means you must write greater than zero. AD minus BC, the whole square is greater than zero. Now multiply that with my meaning, uh, take that minus four into account. Minus four into AD minus BC, the whole square. AD minus BC, the whole square is positive into a negative four is negative. So that one is less than zero. So which means what is this one? There's nothing but the D, D value, discriminant. So that means D is less than zero. If D is less than zero, the uh, quadratic equation has no real roots. Take a picture, children. Done, children. Took a picture. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. It's basically substituting the values, expanding it, and opening the bracket. And then you'll have to change the signs throughout because uh, it's minus a squared d squared plus 2 a b c d minus b squared c squared doesn't suit any identity. So we change the signs throughout by taking that minus outside. We take the minus outside and then we get positive a squared d squared negative 2 a b c d and positive b squared c squared. Took a screenshot, children. Yes, the screen chart, children. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, children. Yeah. Go through this and then I'll explain. See, from all these sums, what are you learning? You're learning how to. Uh, interpret an expression. You are learning how to interpret an expression. Now, when uh, you get D uh, as a numerical value, like if you get D, D is equal to minus 5. So, you know, minus 5 is negative. That means D is less than 0. So, no real roots. No real roots. And if you get D is equal to some 41, it's positive. D is greater than 0. It's positive. Greater than zero means positive. Less than zero means negative. Equal to zero means equal to zero. So when you get 41, D is equal to 41. It's numerical, so easy to judge it is. So D is greater than zero. Equal to 41 means it's uh, greater than zero. So greater than zero meaning real unequal roots. Real and unequal roots.
so when uh, the values of d are numerical it's it's uh, obviously easy to judge whether it is zero less than zero or greater than zero so in in a few sums here we have been learning how to judge expressions you can't find what value it is but you can uh, you know 100% uh, say for sure how the value can be in terms of equal to zero less than zero greater than zero yes children go through this one Please go through the slide, children. I'm waiting. Yeah, just one <clears throat> good reading, you know, might have understood some, might have not understood a few others. That's OK. So here there are two things given to you. The equation, the first equation has real unequal roots. That's given. With that given to you, you should prove that the second equation has more real roots. It's given that the first equation, this is the first one. Yeah, now this is the first uh, equation. This is the second one. So it's clearly given that the first one has real e unequal roots. That means d is greater than zero. Unequal roots greater than zero. So the given equation x square plus 2x plus 2cx plus a b is equal to zero has real unequal roots. That means d is greater than zero. All right. <laughs> So the first equation, as I was telling you, the first equation has real unequal roots. Unequal roots meaning d is greater than zero. Work with that. b square minus 4 is c greater than zero. A substitute b square minus 4 into a into c greater than zero. 4 c square minus 4 a b greater than zero. Take out 4 common. 
Okay, got four comments, so that gives you this one. And then divide by four on both sides. That gives you this. Now C square minus AB is greater than zero. So on transposing, you get C square is greater than AB. So now you know something. C square, when you square the value of C, that will be greater than AB. C square is greater than AB is the equation you're getting. Or sorry, is the inequality you're getting. Now let's take, move on to the second one. The second equation has no real roots. It has no real roots. Oh, sorry, here the second equation will have to prove that it has no real roots. The second equation, we have to prove that it has no real roots. No real roots meaning what? D is less than zero. Yes or no? So you'll have to prove that D is less than zero. You'll have to show that D is less than zero. So work B square minus 4AC. You'll have to find D. Okay, so you'll have to find D. B square minus 4AC, so substitute the values. And uh, you can get minus 2 into minus 2 is 4. Then I've uh, taken out 4 common. It's an expression. You cannot divide by 4 throughout. It's an expression. It's not an equation. So take out 4 common. Then uh, certain terms get cancelled. A square minus A square, B square minus B square gets cancelled. 2AB minus 2C square we have. Take out two common again. There's two common. All right. So take out four common. Uh, take out another two common because there's two and two here. There's two and two here, two and two here. So when you take out another two common, four into two will become eight. Four into two will become eight. So on taking two common, there's already four outside. So into two, eight. Into AB minus C square. Now we we'll, are done. So we got D is equal to D is equal to. OK, uh, D is equal to 8 into AB minus C square. Now you have to show that, uh, you know, D is less than zero. OK, so what do we know? We know that C square is greater than AB. Hope you're all following. So uh, first now, so this is D. This is D. OK, so let's take up this expression first. AB minus C square. What is that we have here? C square is greater than AB. But here we have AB minus C square. See here, C square is greater than AB. That means what? This, is, this one is the value of C square is greater than the value of AB. C square is greater than AB. So that means, now see here children, uh, 5 is greater than 2. Now when you do 2 minus 5, it will be negative. The answer will be negative. Similarly here, similarly here, AB minus C square, AB minus C square. But what is given here? C square is greater than AB. C square is greater than AB. And here you're getting AB minus C square. So the difference will be negative. This one will be negative, the value. Because C square is greater, no? That means when you're finding the difference, you should have C square first. And then minus uh, whatever. So here, so here, AB minus C square we have. Now AB minus C square is negative. Because it is given to, it's known to us that C square is only the greater value. C square is greater than AB. But here you have AB minus C square. So the difference would be negative. Take the case of, uh, you know, take this case. That's what I've been, I've been telling you this again and again. C square is greater than AB, but here you have AB and then C square. That means the difference would be negative. AB minus C square would be negative. So if AB minus C square is negative, that means it's less than zero. Negative meaning less than zero. And multiply that with eight outside. So eight into a negative value is negative. 
that means it's less than zero. The value is less than zero. D is less than zero. So the equation has no real roots. Understood, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, which is which is greater, A B or C square? Which is greater? C square. C, C square is greater. C square is greater. Okay, so now if you find the difference, A B, you are putting the smaller one first, A B first, and then you are writing C square. You are putting A B and then you are writing C square. But you know C square is greater. This is only greater. But you are writing the smaller one first and then the greater one. So the difference will be negative. This one will be negative. This is negative. That means it will be less than zero. And to this negative value, if you multiply a positive eight to this negative value, when you multiply a positive eight minus into plus negative value into positive value, it will be negative only. That means it will still be less than zero. So we have proved that the discriminant. Is less than zero. That means it has no real roots. So this means the equation has no real roots. Yeah, take a picture, children. Took mom. All right. Yeah, go through this one. Take a picture fast, children. Take a screenshot. This is already time. Take a picture here. Two. Picture. <clears throat> Picture. Done, ma'am. All right. Yeah, this one. All this is simple children, meaning uh, last class we have done a little of all this. That's why I came from behind. All this, I think this, this one only we solved in the last class. If minus four is the root of the quadratic equation or something like this. Can you please show the sixth one again? Asha, sure, sure, sixth one. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. This is two children. <clears throat> and this is one. Yeah. Ma'am, can you show the fifth answer again, ma'am? Yeah, I'll come from the beginning again. One, two, three, Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah, we are doing this one. Uh, we'll finish uh, today's session with this one, children. So by next Sunday, you need to complete all this in your notebook. Practice all this in your notebook. Uh, I think uh, there are 18 or 17 and all. 17 and all. So over three days, you can finish it little by little. Over three days, three to four days, you can finish it. All right, I'll just tell you this one and wind up the session for today. Uh, find K if the equation has no real roots. It's given it has no real roots. The equation has no real roots is given to you. That means B square minus 4AC, it has no real roots. That means it's less than zero. B is less than zero. B square minus 4AC is less than zero. Substitute the values and you get 25K square less than 64. K square is less than 64 by 25 perfect square it is so 8 by 5 so as i tell you uh, same inequality same inequality positive value 8 by 5 reverse inequality negative value minus 8 by 5 so let's just see this on a number line let's just see this on a number line Zero. Then uh, what's eight by five children? Uh, one three by five. No, one three by five is like one point six. So this is one point six. But zero. To say one. This is two. Somewhere between here, like this. One point six. One two. Positive one, positive two. So one point six. No, so somewhere like this here. Positive and negative. What is given? K is less than 8 by 5. K, the value of K will be less than 1, uh, will be less than 1, uh, 1.6. So K is less than 1.6, meaning less than values will be in this direction. All these values. K is less than 1.6. So in this direction, all the values. And K is greater than minus 8 by 5. It's greater than minus 8 by 5. That means that you will have to come in this direction. That means, see, but it ends here. In this direction, it ends here. So that means the values of K lie in this range, lie in this range. So how do you write that? Here is minus 8 by 5. Minus 8 by 5 is less than K, is less than 8 by 5. That means, that means the values of K lie in these uh, borders lie between these two borders. Minus 8 by 5, less than K, less than 8 by 5. I'll tell you a simpler way of writing it. See, first we, I told you how to analyze the value of K. K square, uh, K square is less than 64 by 5. So K is 8 by 5. Positive value, same inequality. Negative value, reverse inequality. I think that is understood. Now, 8 by 5 means 1.6. 1.6. See here, 0, 1, 2. That's somewhere here, minus 1.6. 1, 2. So, somewhere here, that positive 1.6. Now, K is less than, uh, you can see this here, the first one. You can see here that k is less than 8 by 5. The value of k is less than 8 by 5 or 1.6. It's less than, so the value of uh, k is less than 1.6. Less than 1.6 meaning in this direction. Less than 1.6. And k is greater than minus 1.6. K is greater than minus 1.6. So minus 1.6, minus 1.7, minus 1.8, they're all small. K is greater than all of that. So that means K will come. The values of K will be in this direction. So basically K lies in this range, this range. So that's how we, that, that's how, this is how we express that. K lies between minus 8 by 5 and plus 8 by 5. 
another way of understanding this uh, content this called a continued proportion sorry continued equality sorry continued inequality okay it's called a continued inequality what's the other way of understanding this now just turn this just put this uh, turn this children so you'll get 8 by 5 is greater than k when you turn it because like 5 is less than uh, 6 when you turn it 6 is greater than 5 when you exchange the sides the inequality is also reversed so if you take 8 by 5 that side okay so when you take uh, when you when you take this 8 by 5 here and the k here you know inequality is reversed it becomes greater than and here k is greater than minus 8 by 5 just put it together k is greater than minus 8 by 5 just put it together sorry this is plus i didn't write it correctly sorry i did not write it correctly children less than 8 by 5 or k is greater than minus 8 by 5 i, I should take in the past this is negative k is greater than minus 8 by 5 or k is less than 8 by 5 all right these are the two things it's greater than minus 8 by 5 or k is less than 8 by 5 so i was talking about this one i was talking about this exchange the places minus 8 by 5 and k so greater than becomes less than and here what do you have here what do you have k is less than 8 by 5 just put it together now minus 8 by 5 less than k less than k less than 8 by 5 that's what you see here i can tell you again we have k is greater than minus 8 by 5 and we also have k less than 8 by 5 let's start from here exchange the places put minus 8 by 5 here and k here so you should re reverse the inequality will become like this now this one please write as it is <coughs> now combine it minus 8 by 5 less than k and you can see here k less than 8 by 5 so k k less than 8 by 5 <coughs> so you can see this one here and this one is here. So it's called a continued inequality. All right, children. I hope all of you have taken the screenshots. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. Good night. You may leave the call. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, children. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, children. Good night. Thank you.